around South Frat Frontenac near Kingston in eastern Ontario. <laughs> Some of Ontario saw almost nothing. Blue skies in the afternoon, lots of sunshine, but uh, that's how it goes this time of year. And we could get into some squalls through the overnight as well. We've got a trough moving through again. Hi, I'm Kim McDonald. Hope you had a good weekend. Uh, we can see that the ice is really melting now around the Great Lakes, and that can be a pretty decent setup for snow squalls. That's what we're expecting as those troughs move through overnight. And again, just some really light snow on the ground. I know a lot of people are saying, come on, bring us spring. Uh, well, it's, it's not here yet. Temperatures a little cool in the east, still very mild in the west. Speaking of which, look at these temperatures on Sunday. So 2.2 degrees in Toronto, uh, Windsor was 2 degrees, Ottawa's just below the freezing mark. We go all the way up to the Arctic Ocean. Look at this, Inuvik in Nunavut, 8 degrees. That's how warm it is, well into the north. Dawson, Whitehorse, Fort Simpson, all warmer than Toronto, Windsor, and Ottawa. But we've got a big trough in the eastern half of the country, so the cool temperatures, that's why we're looking at those to start the week. But we can see that things are starting to rebound as the week goes on. You know, Canada's biggest city has a really big secret, but not if you know the code. Here's Michelle Mackey. So do you have any idea what that tower up there means? I have no idea about that. I believe it indicates the weather, temperature going up and down and whether the skies will be clear or not. Long before the age of the Weather Network app, there was a different way to get your daily forecast. This weather beacon on top of the Canada Life Building in downtown Toronto. Since the 1950s, the beacon has been providing the Toronto forecast through a series of light and color patterns. Here's the code. Flashing red, rain. Flashing white, snow. Solid red, cloudy, solid green, clear. The strip of lights running vertically along the tower display the temperature story. When the lights do nothing, steady temperature. Shooting up, the city is warming. Shooting down, Toronto is cooling. While this is the oldest weather beacon in Canada, it's not the only one in the world. Try the famous weather beacon barometer atop Westpac Place in Sydney, Australia, or the Tempozan Ferris wheel in Osaka, Japan. And of course, we can't forget about the classic weather forecasting rock found anywhere with a little sense of humor. For the Weather Network, I'm Michelle Mackey. Little asterisks on Inuvik, Northwest Territories. I may have said Nunavut earlier. Okay, so seven day forecast in Toronto looks like this. Temperatures get back to seasonal. It's not looking all that bad. You should see a lot of green on the beacon with those clear skies coming. Temperatures are on the rise. So it's been very, very warm in the West. We'll talk about spring on the way to the East with Kelly Sonnenberg coming up. You're watching Canada's Weather Network. To help you plan your activities in the coming days, here are the short and long-term forecasts for your area.
upload your photos and videos, visit upload.theweathernetwork.com. Go to theweathernetwork.com for an in-depth analysis on the science behind the forecast. Find exclusive articles straight from the meteorologists. It was ice that destroyed this farm. We've got some real weather stories coming up here. First, flash floods killed dozens of people in the Jaipura district of Indonesia's eastern province of Papua uh, earlier this past weekend. Over 50 people were killed in the town of Sentani. Thousands of others had to flee their homes because of the flood. A male whale has died from ingesting too much plastic. The museum team who performed the operation to find this out said it's the most plastic group has ever seen in a whale. Inside his belly were 16 rice bags, four banana bags, and several shopping bags. Back to Nebraska, where ice jams have been causing major flooding in several communities near the Iowa and Nebraska border. Machinery, hay tools, livestock, and other items were completely washed away and the farmhouse destroyed by chunks of ice. This Traveler's Report is brought to you by Expedia, everything you need to go.